Smith Rowe scoring his first two Premier League goals and I have him in my team. Way hey! <laughs> On my bench. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I like it! But it's time for the Game Week 36 preview! But first, the Game Week 35 review. With the triple Game Week, average points being over 80 in the end. Ah, uh, are you mad? Did everyone and their nan score this week? Like, uh, what is going on? Whoa! <laughs> With my team, our uh, best team, scoring... Who? 125 points, way! 125 points, oh, you saucy, saucy devil. Absolutely loving it, lads, hey. Meaning my overall rank of 90,000th in the world has got better, hey. But uh, actually, only just by a little bit, just a tad, you know? With it now sitting in the top 80k in the world, lovely stuff. No, but how do you get over 120 points and you only get a 10k green arrow. I saw some people with 100 points and go down in rank. Um, what is that? <laughs> but again, uh, we can't really complain with 125 points, can we? Whoa. <laughs> but the games on my team finished like uh, this. Where it was almost, almost a bit of a jaw spinner, right? Just until the end for most of us. When my transfers in this week for a hit was actually a one point Harry Maguire in who got injured in the first game of a triple game week. Uh, typical, right? And he doesn't play next week. Well, he didn't know, not like he's gonna play for the rest of the season anyway. A Mo Salah only getting an assist until the last minute of the last game, where hey! And thankfully, DCL also did do a goal himself and got all of the bonus in his first game. But those transfers in were for our Marcus Alonso, who somehow started against Man City and somehow scored against Man City. Uh, what? A son who also scored. Uh, oh dear, is this how it's going? And also, I did sell Kane, who did also score, but thankfully, his toenail was offside. So we weren't quite in the minus points there. So even though I chucked out all of those players that did score all the goals, and I took a hit to get them all out, I still actually ended up on a net. Oh, one point, hey, one point gain from my hit. Oh yes, boy. <laughs> but I was always gonna sell Alonso, so that's not ready for the hit. So if you take that out, then the other part of the hit was uh, very good, hey. <laughs> but I still can't believe that Emil Smith Rowe a player I decided to just keep on my bench and, and play a Lingard instead, managed to score his first two Premier League goals and scored 19 points. I think the joint most out of any player in this game week. Oh, there we are then. That is actually the biggest start. I like it. Especially with Lingard only scoring one point. 19 first one from that one decision. Ah. <laughs> and it might say, come on, Bacon, why you got to start the double game with player, right? Why have you played, why have you not played him over Lingard? But I will say, ah, uh, Smith Rowe played in the Europa League. I thought he was going to get benched against West Brom, the easier game, so we'd only have Chelsea, and he hasn't scored yet. And also, Lingardinho, best player in the world, and on penalties. I was like, surely Lingard is the safer option, right? Uh, turns out it was not to be. Imagine I did actually start the Smith Rowe, though, and I was also planning on getting, like, a Godfrey or Dallas instead of the Maguire until the triple game week happened, so, uh, unlucky. <laughs> but at least we did have some other big boy scorers actually in our team and actually playing, with a Bruno equaling the mighty Smith Rowe with a 19 points as it stands, double to the 38. Uh, terms and conditions do apply, and I'm saying it because I don't know for, for sure, because I am kind of recording this three seconds after the last game just finished, because we have less than 24 hours till the next deadline, it's absolutely crazy. But we did also have a Mendy, who actually didn't play the second game, uh, big question marks over him now with Kepa some Sometimes getting in, but thankfully he did save an Aguero penalty. Uh, an excuse of a penalty, really, though. What, like, what was that penalty? Even I could have done better than that with my eyes closed and my left foot, my arm broken, and all that. <laughs> the Sir Trent crossing fetish man with a massive, massive 16 pointer, absolute legend. He's just insane right now, isn't he? Matty Target even get a cleaning sheet for me, which is good because I got him in weeks ago and he hadn't got anything for me. Salah and Jota doing a goal against the Man United, and also Salah getting an assist in the other game as well to so get me all the points for them. And then to finish it off, we had the actually quite underwhelming duo of Vardy and Iheanacho, who actually only got a goal and an assist between them in actually their 4-2 loss against Newcastle. Uh, how did they lose to there and then beat Man United? To be fair, that was like an under-19 B-Tech United, but fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> but the Vardy scoring these points was actually quite the good thing, as I was actually going to sell him and keep Kane, because Kane's got the fixture next week, but I decided I'll keep Vardy just for this one, and then take a hit just to get Kane back in, and turns out that got me one more point where, hey, even with the extra hit where hey it worked see best ever manager here all of the points because i'm just that good with hey so this is how the team ended up doing 
just the casual 125 points were hey, absolutely madness. And also just the 31 points on my bench as well. Uh, like, okay then. Uh, just imagine if I chose Smith Rowe, damn it. Pushing me all the way up into the top 80k, ready to keep on going and pushing the rest of the season with hey. But boys, 100 club is here again. I'm at the bar, I'm getting myself a drink because 100 points, we've reached it again for the second time this season. We're absolutely loving it. Yeah, boy. But guess what, lads? Uh, I, I think it's actually time. Uh, what time is it? Time to move on to the Game Week 36 preview. The blank at Game Week 36 preview, or more like, uh, ew, because right now, we don't even have a full team, oh dear. <laughs> and the only thing we do have is a Christmas tree looking team, isn't it? <laughs> but right now, we do have two starting players blanking you. So I will say straight away, those two fellas are getting chucked in the bin, out of my squad. And another hit is going to be happening to hopefully have a full squad of playing players. At least players with fixtures. Let's see if they actually play, isn't it? <laughs> but one of those players is a Harry Maguire. The best ever transfer I've ever done in FBL, right? A hit to get him Maguire in a triple game week who got one point as he got injured, and now he's also injured for the rest of the season when I kind of wanted him for the last two games. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but there's kind of just absolutely no reason to keep him now because I could get someone in this week who will play and then someone for the rest of the season as well. And then a Jamie Vardy who probably couldn't even score at a kid's birthday party. Never mind that have his own Jamie Vardy party, isn't it? He's a bit of a bye to our lad. You won't be missed going up my team. So if those two fellas are getting chucked in the bin, who are the nice lads? I'm going to be getting in. Whoa, that rhymed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep using that. It's good. <laughs> well, I can already confirm what will be happening is a Harry Maguire to a Stuart Dallas and a Jamie Vardy Vardy Pooper to a Harold Kane. Dallas has always been in my plans and I've just been trying to get him in the last few weeks but something else keeps coming up like a triple game week, like a double game week just before. But now with that quite sexual run for the rest of the season, he's got to be in now. And then I was always going to get Kane back in after keeping Vardy just for this double. To let him have one last bite of the bullet and then just getting Kane and thankfully it paid off and hopefully we can get even more points from it now. See right, I'm just best ever manager. All my plan definitely work. No more Harry Maguire one point as all the points in come in. So that in fact will be a minus four in our blank game week just to have 11 players with fixtures. Ah, uh, there we are then. <laughs> Things you absolutely love to see, right? Yeah. <laughs> but at least there's potential we could have a full squad now. And hopefully, hopefully, at least most of them will play, right? And actually, if you have a nice gentle stare into all the lads' eyes right here, have a bit of a staring competition with them, you can see that, they, that most of them actually have very, very good fixtures, right? Uh, apart from Cody, who probably couldn't even keep a clean sheet against England's under 12 right now. Their defense is that wibbly wobbly. Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs> but the rest of them definitely tickle in my pickle indeed. So let's go through all of the fixtures, give my best ever preview predictions of all the players in the games, and then finish it off with my captaincy thought who I will be slapping that captain armband onto. Yeah, I think we should do that, lad. Shall we? Uh, well, turns out you don't have a choice, so tough, we're doing it anyway. <laughs> where the first game of only eight games this week sees Newcastle take on the champions, Man City, where hey, it feels like they've been trying to caress that title and just tease it a little bit for the last few months, right? But now they finally have their hands on it and they are finally champions. Where I will hopefully have a Diaz man in this game in what will be the very easiest clean sheet you'll ever get in that Man City shirt, right? Especially with Callum Wilson back playing for Hospital FC and out injured again. But unfortunately, I do think Man City will keep a clean sheet and I say unfortunately because I'm not sure if Diaz will actually play. I'm hoping that they play full strength this game, give a bit of a rest bright and then full strength after so Diaz gets at least two games but we'll have to see. But I am going to go for a nice and easy 2-0 win to the new champions Man City. Nothing too crazy, you know. Only two goals, eh? But the next game sees Burnley play Leeds. Brexit Burnley versus the refreshing run around like headless chicken Leeds. Where thankfully, I will now have a player in this game where for literally weeks I have not had a single Leeds player on my side. I got rid of Bamford, Dallas, and all that on my Game Week 31 wildcard. But now finally, I'll have one of them back in the Dallas man. So Dallas will be the man to take them all the way to another win here. I'm going to go for a 2-0 win here because I feel like with Brexit Burnley now safe, nothing to play for. And Bielsa just doesn't let us play as rest, does he? They're going for it. <laughs> Southampton, Fulham. The very wobbled Southampton versus the now relegated Fulham. Ah, down back to the championship you go like the proper yo-yo club you are. Ah, bye. <laughs> but I do be having a Foster in goals in this game. And if he does actually play, I think this will be a very easy clean sheet because Fulham, they just can't score. They are terrible at finding the back of the onion bag. And, they, and Foster 
even though he's been retained with McCarthy, I'm hoping that the win that he was involved in last game, and also the fact he saved a penalty, can maybe get him one extra few game here, and then I don't mind if he gets benched after that. But if it does seem like he's not going to play, which it kind of does already, I'm actually kind of tempted to take a hit for a goalkeeper, right? Because if I'm not going to have a single goalkeeper play in this game week, I could take this opportunity to get in a goalkeeper for this week, but also with better fixtures after. But it is for another hit. Is it worth it for another keeper? Probably not. Hmm. We'll have to see. Deadline stream, I'll decide that, yeah. <laughs> but I reckon this game will finish 2-0 to the Southampton. Brighton versus West Ham. A Brighton team just chillaxing now, aren't they? Hands behind the back and just having a chill. And then a West Ham team that are really not chillaxing. They're down in all the coffee and they need to keep getting the wins away. <laughs> and they do have to keep their foot on full throttle if they want to keep pushing for that potentially Champions League, probably Europa League. But they do still have a chance of it all, so they best keep going for it. So I reckon a full balls out, full attack for them in here in a 2 0 win to the West Ham, Lingardino hopefully being involved. How did West Ham turn into Mr. Lingard and then the last like three games he's been like, ah, oh, where's Lingard gone? Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs> Crystal Palace Villa, where Zaha is pretty much a Zaha, <laughs> not really it, is he? <laughs> so apart from Eze doing anything for them, I think they'll, this one will actually be quite an Eze one for Villa, you say, yeah. <laughs> where they also do still have some kind of outside chance Europa, probably not, maybe the Europa Conference League, right? Like, I feel like nobody talks about that, but that is gonna be a thing next season. <laughs> oh, is it next season? is the season after i think it's next season I don't know. <laughs> but i do still think villa will be on it here hopefully targeting me some more fbl points at ah, ah, see what it did there uh, uh, to, to my target get points uh, shut okay <laughs> but 2-0 to the villa i reckon it will be yeah spursy walls where i will now have the sir harold came back with hey looking to grab his own boot and chuck it away and secure himself a nice shiny golden one instead i reckon scoring the most goals this season can he do it but can the mighty connor cody and wolves have something to say about that and stop him here. Uh, absolutely not. No, they are absolutely terrible. No chance of that happening. So a nice and easy win for the Spursy boys here. A couple of goals for Kane, I reckon. 3-1 is what I'm going for. West Bromwich, Liverpool. Where we have the most Alaman, a cross in fact is Trent Gies and a Dio goal, Jota. Where hopefully, hopefully, there is a chance that all of them play, right? But I am really hoping they will because Jota kind of impressed. Salah got the goal at the end. Trent, amazing. If they all start here, all of the points are seriously income in. Where Liverpool also really need to win to get onto that Champions League spots as well, isn't it? But also West Brom. Uh, you're going down. We're yelling, bye-bye. So will Liverpool be able to give them a bit of a spank in you and show them that they are? Ah, the Liverpool back again. So a nice and easy 3-0 win to the pool, yeah? When my captain could be involved in this game? Ah, find out who I might go for. And then to finish it off, we have Everton versus Sheffield United. The other relegated team versus up the Toffees themselves. Who, under the radar, are actually quite up there for a fight in Europe as well, you know? Like, I feel like they had a really good start, and then the rest of the season has been... Not not really yet, but they're actually still quite up there. Like, fair play to them, okay. <laughs> but I will, in fact, have a DCL, DCL, DCL in this game. Very nice, very nice. As Sheffield United are uh, proper wobbly wibbly defence, and they all the goals are going to be conceded. DCL, the score confirmed. A 3 0 to Everton there. And that is it for my preview predictions of all the games this week. Where, as it stands, I will actually have a, at least one player with a fixture playing in every single game of this game week. Uh, that is absolute manners. I can't remember a time where that has happened where there's at least eight fixtures. You know, when there's a blank game with like four fixtures, yeah, you probably have more, especially in a free hit, right? But with a normal team and I have a player playing in every single game, that is absolutely mad nuts in a blank game week as well. We're currently four of my players blank. Whoa. <laughs> but something that could work out even better for me is my captain, Ray. And who will be the lucky man to grab that armband and slap it on his hand? Where's my armband? Ah, uh, this armband. There we go. There you go. Who wants it? Who wants it? Bow. <laughs> We're out of my team right now. We have quite a few candidates, you know. We have a Salah against a West Brom. We have a Jota against a West Brom. We have a Trent against a West Brom. But we also have a Kane against the Wolves and a DCL against Sheffield United if we're really stretching it as well. But even though I do think DCL and Kane might be the safer in terms of they're guaranteed to start, they probably can quite easily get a goal. Do they get that many points from just one goal? Nah, no, the upside doesn't seem as high, you know. But I think the potential of a midfielder with an extra point for a clean sheet, an extra point for a goal, I think they could be it, you know? So someone else might take that armband. So that person will be Jesse Lingardini. No, I'm joking, joking. It's Mo Salah. 
Mo Salah. Ha, epic prank there, guys. I absolutely pranked you. I, I teased you with the Captain Salah there the whole time. And you're like, oh, he's definitely going Salah. Oh, no, he's going Lingard. Oh, he's pranked us. Ah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> but it will be the Mo Salah man who is also chasing that golden boot now. He got another goal. So I think he's level with Kane now. And with Liverpool prop going for it, him prop going for it, I think there's a very good chance he could do very well against West Brom. And when you have a player like Salah against West Brom who are already relegated, it would be very, very rude not to go for the captain. So it's got to be done. It's got to be done, you might say. Hey. But also now after that performance against Man United, I'm actually almost considering Trent. Like he was so good. Hmm. We'll think about it on deadline stream, all right? You best be there. But that is it for the Game Week 36 preview. So to confirm, the transfers have not yet been confirmed. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do it the second I stop recording. <laughs> but it will be a Harry Maguire to a Dallas and a Jamie Vardy to a Harold Kane for a hit in a blank game week. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and I might even take another hit for a goalkeeper. But you will have to check out my deadline stream later on if that actually happens. And if you're not there... Well, guess you'll never find out. Unlucky for you. <laughs> and the captain is also on the most Alaman easy hat trick income in. But that is it for today. So thank you all for watching. And remember, <laughs> don't be a cheeky scrub. Subscribe to Nathan Bacon right now. <laughs>